Is the Feldenkrais method a waste of time? Is it a miracle cure for all your aches and pains? If you're gonna pay someone a couple hundred or a couple thousands of dollars, you don't wanna waste all that money on a bunch of hippie hoodoo, do you? But if it works, well, that's all that matters, right? Let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. I recently got a message from Janet, a longtime Patreon patron of mine since 2018, and she said, I have been wondering for a long time about your thoughts on Feldenkrais. At 62, my body with its many injuries seems to respond to Feldenkrais, but I'm not convinced. Any opinions? For those of you who don't know what the heck Feldenkrais is, let me read from Feldenkrais.com. The Feldenkrais method of somatic education is a practice, a process, and a system for self-improvement. It is a form of somatic education which means it uses movement and real-time awareness of your own body sensations to guide you toward the positive changes you seek. All of that is a fancy way of saying Feldenkrais practitioners help you get more aware of what your brain and body are doing whenever you move. Now let's talk about what the heck that even means. Then we'll talk about why you'd want to do it and by the end of this video we'll talk about my personal opinion on Feldenkrais. First of all, I think we can agree on this. Most of us go through life on autopilot. We're literally just going through the motions without any serious thought or attention to how we get through those motions. I turn my head left, I turn it right, I look up, I walk from point A to point B. It's all super simple and doesn't require a lot of thought, right? Well, if you were paying attention, you might have noticed that I did some weird stuff just now. As I turned my head left, my shoulders shrugged up. As I looked up, my shoulders shrugged up. And as I walked, I did a funny little limp thing. All of those little motions happen because my brain and muscles are used to a certain firing pattern. I don't have to think about it. They just fire in unison automatically. This is what makes it easy for you to ride a bike after you've learned how to do it the first time. Your muscles just figure out the coordination necessary and then they do it automatically. This is what makes it easy for you to jiggle the key in your door lock or throw a ball the same way every time without having to think about it. When you practice a pattern a lot, your muscles just learn to work together automatically. In short, muscles that fire together, wire together. It's a simple shortcut that just makes life easier until it doesn't. As humans, we like to take shortcuts. Otherwise, life gets overwhelmingly complex and time-consuming, but it's important to recognize our propensity for shortcuts and the damage that it can do. When I see a door, I assume the knob turns and then I push or pull so it'll open in or out. I don't have to study every door I come across to verify that the doorknob turns, that the hinges are strong enough to support the door, etc., etc. This just saves me time. But sometimes shortcuts aren't reliable or good for us. Consider the idea that lifting weights is good for us. It's always good for us, right? But if you do it at high intensity every day, it quickly leads to injury. Eating is good for humans, especially if you're living in the wild hunting and gathering food, but if you're surrounded by junk food, the mental shortcut of always eat when there's food available quickly turns into obesity and diabetes. If you subscribe to a certain religion, you're more likely to assume everyone who is a member of your same religion is pretty trustworthy. But if you take this to the opposite extreme, you might assume that everyone who isn't a part of your religion is untrustworthy and maybe subhuman, and that can lead to fear, anger, and violence. If you're a die-hard member of a political party, you probably assume that everyone in your party is rational and intelligent and loves America, and everyone in the other party is a half-wit, inbred sociopath who should be drowned in a barrel of acid because your party approved media outlets have trained you to automatically take that mental shortcut. This makes it nearly impossible for people to have rational, respectful, intelligent conversations and results in a society that's fracturing into an alienating mess. Sometimes we don't notice the negative effects of a shortcut for a long while. The effects become normal and in many ways hidden. The same is true with movement shortcuts that we're taking with our bodies. If my muscles keep firing in a weird pattern that causes me pain, I may not realize that the pattern and the pain are related. If I keep shrugging my shoulder, I might see limited range of motion in my neck or shoulder and that might result in pain, but the shrug seems normal to me unless I'm paying more attention and building my skill of awareness. You need to become aware of these kinds of inefficient patterns and then fix them. So how do you do that? 
Hmm. To become aware of inefficient patterns, you have to slow down and observe. You have to actually dedicate some time and mental energy to identifying where you may be doing something that doesn't serve your best long-term interests. Sure, maybe limping made sense to protect your freshly sprained ankle, but do you really wanna limp around forever and cause yourself hip and back pain? If you never slow down enough to observe what's happening, you'll keep limping from point A to point B with hip pain and back pain, wondering why God, fate, or your genetics cursed you with a bad hip and spine. But if you actually remember that muscles control movement and logically deduce that you should be able to fix the vast majority of movement problems by retraining your muscles, then this is where something like Feldenkrais might come in. Now, full disclosure, I've had only two or three official Feldenkrais sessions in my life. I've also had similar movement awareness and movement integration sessions from similar practitioners in my life. And all of these sessions had the same flavor, though I'm sure the practitioners of different schools would love to argue about how different they are from one another and how only one school is the true school of movement. Sadly, ego-driven, financially incentivized territorialism is not limited to just conventional Western medicine. It shows up in all kinds of hippie alternative schools too. In any case, here's what my sessions were like when I was doing Feldenkrais and Feldenkrais adjacent sessions. I spent a lot of time lying on the floor, moving my pelvis around, paying attention to what muscles fired when I moved into different positions. I did some rotating, wiggling, and rolling. I also observed my shoulder position and felt for neck tension as I explored head, arm, and neck motions. And I did similar things sitting and standing and walking. In every session, the goal was generally to learn to use less effort to achieve the same endpoint. So I would pay close attention, identify which muscles didn't need to fire, and focused on getting effort out of the ones I actually needed to use. So then when you turn your head, no more shrugging. When you look up, no more shrugging and craning your neck. In a nutshell, you're learning that if you can relax the stuff that doesn't need to fire, you can fix your movement patterns. Breaking up muscle firing patterns like this is called dissociation. You identify muscles that fire together and you dissociate them. You disconnect them so they don't fire together anymore. And this can be great. But is it so great that I would spend thousands of dollars chasing the Feldenkrais awareness through movement holy grail? Well, let's zoom out for a second and think about how we might get inefficient and painful movement patterns in the first place. I could certainly have a movement problem from muscles firing unnecessarily at the wrong time. If I learned to relax those muscles, it could really help, but... What if that muscle is firing because a different muscle is too weak? Or what if the pain I experience in my leg is because that muscle itself is too weak? Can I relax that pain away with more awareness? Or put another way, if you lack the strength to do a comfortable push-up, could you relax and awareness your way into a solid, comfortable push-up? The answer is no, sorry. Now let's say you go through daily life hunched over like this and your back and your hips hurt. Well, you probably have some muscles in the front of your hips that are a little bit stiff and tight and they need to relax and you need to have the awareness to help them relax. But the muscles back here, like your butt and your hamstrings, are gonna be pretty weak too. And if you don't have the strength in those muscles to right yourself and get yourself standing up straight, no amount of awareness is going to fix that problem. Your butt and hamstrings might even ache because they're so atrophied because atrophy aches. Now, if you wanna solve this problem, you can't just use relaxation and awareness. You have to actually build strength and that requires gradual safe resistance training so that you can then train those muscles to be stronger so that you can pick stuff up without being afraid. That means you'll be able to pick up grocery bags, pick up your grandchildren or your children, and just be able to enjoy your day because you have strength in the muscles to help you stand back up. If you have issues because you're weak and deconditioned, no amount of extra awareness is going to overcome the weakness and atrophy issue. However, you do need to learn to have awareness to strengthen your body well. So if you have very poor proprioception, which is a fancy way of saying awareness of your own body's position and state, then you need to develop that skill. Having a practitioner guide you through a calm and careful session where you are practicing paying attention to your body 
could be extremely helpful. You might see obvious improvements in excess muscle tension. You might heal some aches and pains. But, and this is an enormous but, there's a 99% chance you've got some muscle atrophy and stiffness that will need to be addressed for you to feel healthy, vibrant, and full of energy. So all of this means that Feldenkrais and similar movement practices that came out of the wild and crazy hippie era can be useful in developing awareness and relaxing out some aches and pains but it also means it's not a full and complete solution. It's like cereal in the morning, it's only part of a complete breakfast, except it probably smells like patchouli or musky armpit. Also, cereal is really not part of a complete breakfast, so maybe it's more like a banana or a glass of milk if you're not lactose intolerant. Something nutritious, anyway. Don't expect more awareness to solve every problem. Don't put all your money on the Feldenkrais horse just because it won one or two races early on. Janet, my Patreon patron who asked this question, is in her 60s. And you know what happens in your 60s? Everyone tells you to sit on your butt and enjoy your favorite TV shows. You know what happens then? All your muscles waste away and your bones start to disintegrate due to lack of loading. And you know what doctors will tell you? It's because you're old. Here are some pills for bone density. Oh, did you watch Jeopardy last night? Who won? Oh yeah, by the way, these pills might destroy your liver. No big deal. But what they should tell you is that you can build muscle and improve bone density with careful gradual resistance training. If you challenge your muscles to move your bones against some level of resistance, you get stronger and your muscles and bones get stronger too. And having strong muscles and bones is paramount as you get older and frankly for your entire life, no matter how young or old you are. So Janet and anyone else watching, here's my opinion on whether Feldenkrais is worth trying. Yes, there are many people who could benefit from learning how to sense their bodies better. Yes, you should develop better awareness. Yes, Feldenkrais could help that. No, it is not the only way to do so. No, it is not a miracle cure. And no, it will not necessarily make you stronger unless maybe you have a Feldenkrais trained strength coach trainer guy, girl. Is it worth spending money on Feldenkrais? Well, it depends on how much money you have and what it costs in your local area. If you can afford it, it won't hurt to try. Just remember that there are overlapping and complementary skills you need to feel your physical best. You need awareness. You also need to be able to relax muscles and you also need to be able to contract muscles with enough force to stabilize and move the bones in your body to match whatever a situation demands. If you can find a trainer or resistance training regimen that really cues you into paying attention to your body's sensations and cues you into the right muscle activity, you'll be better off doing that than spending years trying to add extra layers of awareness and relaxation to your body. If you make sure you're also stretching properly and developing strength at every length, you'll be happier in the long run. For me, good resistance training involves being aware of what I'm trying to do and whether my body is doing it the right way, efficiently and cleanly, or the wrong way with lots of compensations. If you've used my do-it-yourself programs, you may have noticed that awareness does play a role in the program setup and how I talk about various exercises. That's intentional. As you develop better awareness, you can better navigate and attend to what your body needs. If you have poor body awareness, work on that, improve it, develop it with whatever drills and strategies you want, including Feldenkrais. Roll around on the floor, do slow drills to dissociate certain muscles from one another, pretend you're an octopus. But don't expect doing awareness drills like that to build or maintain your strength so that you feel confident in your daily life. It's just not gonna happen. Instead, carry over that awareness into a more complete exploration of your body's abilities. That needs to include resistance training to maintain or build muscle mass and bone density and an overall sense of competence and confidence. Because if you spend all your time just doing super low intensity, relaxing exercises on the floor and gentle walking, you will lose all your muscle. And if you lose all your muscle, you lose your ability to move. And then all you're left with is the awareness of how much it sucks to be stuck in a chair or in bed. Okay, makes sense, great. Now tell me about your experience with Feldenkrais. Was it mind blowing? Was it meh? Drop me a comment down below. 
To rebuild your body at home, go to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that'll work for you. For more free videos to help you move right and feel right, check these out here. Find me on Patreon at patreon.com uprighthealth. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.